Hello internet, internet. Big Dave here, and I am cheap. Hello internet, it's Big Dave here, and this is Out There, Omega Edition from Miklo Studios. This game is coming to Steam on April 2nd, and it will retail for $10. Out There originally started its life as a mobile game, but we are now finally getting it here on PC in this special expanded edition. This is a light space sim with a heavy emphasis on resource management and diplomacy. They cite game books like Choose Your Own Adventure books as a heavy influence, and man, you can really feel it. There are times in the game when you are faced with a choice, with a bit of text, and a choice that will potentially radically alter the course of your game for the good or for the bad. Overall, though, this game is a depressing romp towards your inevitable death alone in space. So the stage for that is set by a rather nice intro cutscene. We're going to take a look at that and then we'll get into the gameplay. Hopefully help you to understand a little bit about why I think Out There Omega Edition is a great, great game. I'm an astronaut aboard the Nomad. Passenger on a line that connects Earth to Ganymede, a moon of Jupiter. Until... Something happened. When I awoke from cryonics, I wasn't in orbit around Ganymede. In fact, I wasn't even in the solar system anymore. How far out there, you might ask? How about this? That is our home system. That is our destination. Every single one of these white starbursts between where we are now and our destination is a star with its own system of planets. Yeah. It's a tall task, but luckily we have all sorts of cool futuristic space technology to try and help us make that journey. So we're trying to break it down here, try to give you some information, not too much. I don't want to overload you. I'm not trying to teach you how to play the game. I'm just trying to teach you some of the basics so you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about as I go through the rest of the game. This is our star map. This is going to be how we navigate around to the different star systems. So you're going to notice two distinct rings here, and the uh, perceptive amongst you will also see there is a, a nice little legend down here letting us know that the outer ring is our telescope. That's our view distance, essentially. Outside that ring, we can't get any information about these systems. Inside that ring, we can get information like, this is a supernova. This is a white dwarf star. We can see basic information about how much it would take of each of our resources to travel there, but really that's uh, not going to help us much because we can't technically travel there. Where can we travel? Oh, well, any, anywhere inside this ring, right? This nice little turquoise ring that says space folder down here. Inside this ring, you can choose to travel to the stars. You can see this is a white dwarf, and it's going to cost me this much of my precious resources to travel there. Now, before we get to traveling to all these different stars and trying to get ourselves home, let's take a look at the system that we find ourselves in at the very beginning. There is a rather interesting alien artifact here of some type. Is this the thing that brought us here? Is it the thing that stopped us and kept us from going even further out there? I don't know. We can pop in and take a closer look at it. It's the cosmic cube. We're screwed. Great. Uh, so sometimes this benevolent cube will uh, restore some of your uh, resources. So for instance, in this case, it restored some of my fuel. That's great. Speaking of resources, as you can see, in the upper left-hand corner, we have our fuel, we have our oxygen, and we have our hull integrity. These are the bars that will govern your life or death. Something else that's going to govern your life or death is uh, your systems, your ship. Yes, go ahead, say it. That looks kind of like FTL, 
Right, it does, okay, a little bit. Because why? Because it's a simplified representation of the interior of your ship. So, okay, it is reminiscent of FTL. But since this game lacks combat, a lot of the systems of FTL simply aren't present. So, what's going on here in this screen? Well, we have these things, systems. Notice they have little green dots. Green is good. Green means that they're working. The various systems are things that we might need. For instance, that space folder that allows us to travel between systems. Also, we have drills and probes, which allow us to gather the resources that we will need to refill our fuel, oxygen, and restore hull integrity. We have some empty slots where we can, uh, you know, expand, maybe, if there's anything that we can build. You will slowly but surely learn new technologies as you venture through space and encounter alien races. And we also, last but not least, have our elements. Each of these elements can do something. Maybe that's not clear at first. You may pick up elements that don't necessarily have an immediate use, but eventually you'll probably be able to use them in the crafting of items. Other resources are basic necessities of life. For instance, iron will refuel our hull integrity. Oxygen refuels our oxygen. That's right. And hydrogen and helium, in this case, will refill our fuel. Different ships have different configurations and use different things to repair hulls and fuel and well, pretty much everything generates oxygen, but some ships will have systems that will allow you to use other things besides just straight oxygen to generate oxygen. That's pretty much it. That is pretty much everything that you need to know to start moving forward in this game. Resources, telescope, space folder, basic layout of your ship. That's it. So we have nothing more that we can really do here other than to move. So let's take a look. We have a yellow dwarf and a yellow dwarf. I've never had a time where I didn't have two equal cost yellow dwarf stars to begin with. So, you know, take that for what you will. So this circle is actually really important, the space folder circle, because there are times where you can isolate yourself to a certain degree. You could travel down an arm for a certain amount of time and then get to the end and realize I can't actually reach any other systems from here so I have to backtrack, and backtracking can mean your death. So hopefully we won't run into one of those situations. And to hedge our bets, I'm actually going to travel this way because there's a lot more stars over here than there are over here. And here we go. This travel animation is cool the first five times you see it. After that, it's not as cool. And in fact, you can turn it off in the options menu. The space folder is made of alien technology. I know how to build it and to fix it, but I don't know how it actually works. When I switch it on, it vibrates with a heavenly chant, like a cosmic choir singing my death. Lots of flavor text like that, lots of cool stuff. Sometimes that jump into the system will come with an event. Sometimes you get, you get lucky and it just comes with a little bit of flavor text. And I breathe a sigh of relief when it's just flavor. So, here we have our planets, we have a rocky planet, and we have a gas giant. Gas giants will be good for gathering things like gases, helium, hydrogen, etc. And rocky planets are good for gathering things like ore, copper, gold, iron. Yeah, you're starting to see it now, it's starting to make sense, huh? There is an inherent risk with going to a gas giant. You will lose some hull integrity when you go to a gas giant. But because fuel is the most important thing to me, I prioritize fuel over everything else in the game. I'm going to go to the gas giant first. As we hit the gas giant, we have but one option with our current sh uh, ship configuration, which is to launch a probe. So we will. You can get risky with your probes. You're going to notice this probe requires fuel. Yeah, that sucks, man, because fuel, man, fuel. It's precious. Uh, so yeah, you can go a little bit deeper into the planet, into the atmosphere, to try and gather more and more resources. You can also get a little bit dangerous. Red means danger, right? There is a chance of losing your probe when your bar is red. Uh, yeah, I usually end up between 5 and 7, depending on my current fuel stock. Let's launch a probe. Hopefully we'll gather some resources. And here we go. Yeah, we got a whole buttload of hydrogen, so we're definitely going to bring that on board. You can launch another probe. The possibilities 
of diminishing returns are certainly there. There will eventually be devices you can get to use to scan a planet to let you know how many times you can kind of dip back into the honey pot before you just pull out a handful of stingers. So let's go ahead and depart this gas giant with our fuel. Now, uh, here's kind of the main thing you're going to be doing with those resources. We have all this hydrogen. We have a little bit of a deficit of fuel here. So we can drop it right here. And we are going to get two fuel per hydrogen. So we're going to get 30 fuel refilled for this 15 hydrogen. So there we go. We are at 97 fuel. And we are feeling very happy because we have another 20 hydrogen in the bank. And uh, nothing feels better than having a whole buttload of your hydrogen, helium, or whatever it might be in reserve. Uh, so do we want to hit the rocky planet? Sure, why not? For the purposes of this video, let's hit the rocky planet. We're going to head down and land on the rocky planet. It's going to cost us a little bit of fuel to do so, and then we can drill. Much like with the probe, you have to risk resources to gain resources. Let's go ahead and drill down. And we have more iron, which is always nice. And we have, uh, is that silicone? Yes, it is. Or silicon. I don't know. Mm -hmm. There we go. It's a fairly common material. It's critical to all electronic devices. And uh, you will also notice that uh, if we back out here and go to our ship, if we want to craft things, many of these systems will require silicon. So there you go. And let's go ahead and lift off. Again, we could go back. We could dip in again and we could drill again. Diminishing returns. I usually just hit up one resource gather early in the game before I have the ability to actually tell whether or not I'm going to reap some rewards because it can really suck to invest five fuel into a probe and then only get back two hydrogen. So you've actually lost one fuel overall. That really sucks. Let's move on to the next system. We have a red dwarf, and we have a black hole. Let's steer clear of that black hole. Here we go. Again, a beautiful animation, but yeah, I've seen it about a thousand times. I left it on for the benefit of you guys. The ship experienced a power surge during the last jump, or something like that anyway. It knocked the space folder out of order. Sure hope I have enough raw materials to fix it. Me too. So now our space folder is out of commission, which means we can't really travel around too much. We could travel within this system because we still have our uh, interplanetary reactor, but we can't leave this system without first repairing our space folder. Luckily, it's only going to take one iron to repair. So there you go. We are happy our space folder is working once again. So we are presented with a rocky planet, a rocky planet, and a gas giant. Again, I prioritize fuel, so we're going to head over to the gas giant. You can see our fuel dangerously low. Dangerously low. So we're going to dip in and we are going to harvest. Harvest, harvest. There we go. We'll immediately go to our ship and we will start refueling it. Helium is really nice because helium actually gives you four fuel per helium. So this is actually going to restore 40 of our fuel. Lovely. I love helium. Well, on this ship, at least, I love helium. So there are a few more events that I hope we can see. So I'm going to start kind of moving through quickly to hopefully encounter a couple more events for you guys so you can get an idea of exactly what's going on here. We've got another red dwarf. We've got a blue giant. Let's head over to the blue giant. An unusual phenomenon in this sector is contracting and die. Wait. The sector is contracting and dilating? Wow, space-time continue. Uh, okay, um, I'm using a lot less fuel. Nice. Nice. All right, so uh, that was actually a welcome little, uh, little blurb. Got ourselves what looks like a Class M planet here. And indeed it is. It has a breathable atmosphere out here in the inhabitable zone. We're going to go down to this planet. We're going to land. Of course, it takes resources to land. Breathable, breathable atmosphere allows us to refuel our oxygen tanks. Nice. So we can drill or we can encounter life. Encountering life is one of the coolest mechanics in this game. Wow, look at that. All right, so uh, here we have this strange alien being who is speaking a language we cannot understand. He runs up and places something on the ground. He runs away. Great. 
So from his gibberish, we managed to decipher a couple of words, and we collected some omega. Omega is an omni-material. Omega actually allows us to refill any of our systems, and uh, it is, uh, as you might imagine, super useful. One omega translates into a whole lot of resources. Now, our whole integrity is starting to dip, so I am going to go ahead and fill up a bit. That's going to free up an inventory slot so we can go ahead and drill. As we drill down, this is a rich planet indeed. I like it. I like it. All right. We got some copper. We've got some gold. And we've got a lot more oxygen. So I'm going to take that. Unfortunately, got to leave some of this stuff behind. No real choice. Got to leave it behind. And we are going to, yes, disembark this planet. Here we go. Moving on to the next system. White Dwarf. Red Giant. And this is pretty much the loop of the game. You've pretty much seen it. We're trying to travel forward. We're trying to move constantly towards our home system. But we're trying desperately to survive. So here we go. Another system brings another event. Day 45. One of my devices was vibrating weirdly every time I turned it on. Assembled improperly, screwed down badly, I don't know. It's hard to build clockwork quality equipment with nothing but random drifting salvage. So it finally broke down. I need to fix it up. My telescope is broken. Let's check it out. Telescope. Repair. You can repair it with Omega if you'd like, but since it only requires one iron to repair, I'm just going to re repair it with one iron. So here we are in this new system. We have a rocky planet and a gas giant. Fuel is looking a little low. I'm going to head in. I'm going to orbit. Before I launch my probe, I'm going to take stock of what I have. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and refill my tanks. This is going to leave me with a single open inventory slot. And I'm going to launch my probe in hopes that it will recover lots and lots of helium. And it did. So I don't think two helium is worth jettisoning, uh, jettisoning my gold or copper or silicon. So I am going to uh, finish up there and I am going to head on to the next place. Actually, before I do that, we are a bit low on the hull integrity. Again, as I said, journeying into those gas giants does do a number on your hull. So that's going to help me out. I have an open slot here. I don't think I'm going to travel to a rocky planet in this system. Let's travel to a rocky planet in the next system. So you can see here, the only option I really have to continue moving forward towards my goal is this single option. You can sometimes limit yourself like that as I was saying before. So we are going to take the only real option we have here. And here we go, day 54. According to my calculations, last night was New Year's Eve. To celebrate, I wrote the year on the wall with a piece of burnt carbon and synthesized some spirits with a few spare liters of hydrogen and solvents. They didn't taste good, but they did the trick. Oh yeah, and I synthesized the alcohol with an electrode that nearly set fire to the fuel tanks. But what's New Year's without some fireworks? Nice. I was expecting to lose some fuel there, but I didn't. Okay, so yeah, we only have a rocky planet here. So uh, let's go ahead and orbit this planet. We're going to land and we are going to drill. And we are going to get a whole crap ton of stuff. Uh, let's see. So let's go ahead and max out there. Let's bring in our... Iron, and unfortunately, we're going to have to leave the uh, thorium. Yes, behind. A blackish uncommon element used in the production of reactors. We're not really in need of it right now, so it's okay to leave it behind. So before we leave, let's take a quick look at our current state in terms of fuel. Indeed, we need some. And let's go ahead and disembark. So as you can see, going down to a planet can be a little bit costly, but I think that was well worth it. Supernova. Black hole. Uh, yeah, let's, let's go over here to the supernova. Something has crashed onto the observation bay window. A purple and blue object glowing very fast, looking like a plant. It spreads quickly across the entire ship, and the internal temperature starts to plummet. It's absorbing my heat. Before I freeze to death, I leap onto my spacesuit. 
into my spacesuit and quickly consider my options. So here's one of those choose your own adventure kind of arcing points or uh, excuse me, diverging points that you can pick. So we can fly towards the nearest star to try to burn it off or we can go out in space and kill it. Let's kill it. I grab a smoldering iron, my only weapon, and exit the craft. I try to burn the creature away, but it instead tries to consume the iron itself. I try several more times and only manage to burn huge gashes into the ship. In desperation, I hurl the, so the solder uh, soldering iron into space, and the plant goes after it. Oh, nice. That's good thinking, me. Spinning into the void. I'm safe again, but the hull is a little worse for wear. We're at 65 right now. What is the penalty going to be? 15. So we lose 15 from this event. Oh, darn. Okay, breathable planet. Ah, oh, man, we are getting down here in uh, resources. And this is inevitably what kind of happens. You're not getting the planets that you need. I've got to land. I, f I feel like I've got to land, right? So we're going to restore our oxygen tanks, but we are looking pretty bad right here and right here. Let's encounter life. Maybe it's going to be good. Maybe it's not. So he, I don't think he's, yeah, he's not using any of the words that we understand. So should we approve or not? Uh, yeah, let's approve. He doesn't want to talk anymore. I guess we offended his uh, delicate sensibilities, although we did learn a new word. Very nice. We encountered a new alien race and learned a new word. We can't afford to drill, so we have to take off. And now we are headed to the next system. So this is going to take most of our fuel to get to this yellow dwarf. We are praying at this point, praying for a gas giant. Meteoric rain fell on the ship like iron hail. I managed to divert my course in uh, the nick of time. Only lost a little fuel. Nothing to worry about. Really? Okay. Nothing to worry about. Sure. So this is probably going to be our end. Uh, no, wait, we have some Omega. So we're going to use Omega to save ourselves here. It's going to get us up to uh, 35 or 32 fuel by restoring 25. And it's going to give us the ability to head to none of these planets because none of these planets are going to help me all right our journey continues just barely uh we're going to a black hole or are we going to a white dwarf i'm going to chance the white dwarf hoping that we won't get an event that costs us fuel and that we will have a gas giant here a planet orbits here or at least something the size of a planet i observed the huge structure and discovered that it's made of two pyramids attached to their base. Oh, oh, nice. Okay, so this is reminiscent of the object that we found in the beginning of the game. As I approach, I notice that asteroids and ship debris are orbiting the structure, attracted by some mysterious force. Let us approach. I set course towards the common base of the two pyramids, where I discover an opening. Suddenly, a force takes hold of the ship and draws me closer. I immediately sense danger and set my reactors to full power. Great. The grasping force searches for a handhold tearing open the cargo bay i barely managed to escape alas alas i lost much of what i was carrying but at least i'm alive oxygen and gold i think i can live with that so that kind of sucked and what sucks even more is that we end up here with a metallic uh, planet a rocky planet which is only going to yield metallic ores so we have no choice but to roll the dice and journey forward here. There is absolutely no system we can make it to with our 13 fuel. But the game does have a mechanic that is based around rolling the dice. So we are going to head to this... Uh, yeah, what the heck? Let's head to this black hole. Oh, there's not going to be anything in a black hole. I've got to head to this white dwarf or yellow dwarf. Let's go. Check our cargo for anything that might allow us to uh, to get some fuel. Uh, even if we choose to dismantle these pieces of machinery, none of them are going to give us hydrogen or helium, unfortunately. And none of these are valid fuel sources. We'll repair our hub, because our hull, because why not? And then we will... Uh, uh, we'll take a chance. Here we go. That's it. Out of fuel. This will be my last entry. My fuel tanks are empty, and I have nothing left to produce fuel with. I will return to cryostasis and let my ship drift in space. I hope that through the millennia to come, someone will rescue me. But that's a thin hope at best. This is the end of my adventure. Indeed. So we get a chance to recap our stats here. 
This is the end of my journey score, 3,971. You can see my previous best here. Nine star systems visited, two alien races discovered, and we had one last chance that was successful. So that's it. We can take a last gander at our ship. And we are done. We are dead. Here we go. Now, the game did crash, as it often seems to do when I hit the quit button. Not really sure why. I have about 10 error reports sitting on my hard drive that I intend to send to the developer. Uh, maybe it is something with my setup, video card, or otherwise. So I'm going to send those error reports in. I will just let you know that the game did crash just now to the desktop. But that doesn't stop me from enjoying this game, enjoying it quite a bit. This is a very interesting title. If you like games like FTL, but found the combat focus of the game to be a little bit too much for you, if you were like me and wanted a chance to play the role of Picard as opposed to the role of Kirk, then you're going to get it with Out There Omega Edition. Check it out on Steam. I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.